Starting off this Tuesday edition of the Sportsmax Zone with football, match week seven in the Jamaica Premier League, sponsored by Ray Nevue, wrapped up with a Monday night doubleheader at the Stadium East Field. Humbleland got the better of Waterhouse through Javain Thompson's 13th minute strike. Portmore United and Tivoli Gardens played out a goalless draw. Now here is a look at the match week results for you. Limehole beaten 1-4 by Veer United, the Cavalier, Arnett Gardens and the Treasure Beach Harbourview games postponed because Harbourview and Cavalier have CONCACAF playoff finals uh, this week. Dunwa Holden 1-2-1 over Mullines for their first back-to-back -back wins of the season. Montego Bay United beaten 2-1 by the reigning champions and leaders Mount Pleasant. Waterhouse beaten 1-0 by Humberland and the other Monday night result Tivoli and Portmore in a nil all scoreline. Now with uh, the score lines from the latest games. There are the standings that we can look at. Mount Pleasant on top with maximum 18 points. Arnett Garns seven points behind in second. Portmore and Humberland also on 11 points. Tivoli Gardens on 10 and Waterhouse on 10 as well. Those are the top six teams in the league at the moment. Cavalier just outside a playoff spot and Veer as well. Lime Hall and Malines United bottom of the table at the moment so uh, good interesting action over the weekend in Monday night football we saw um, the goalkeepers as we just mentioned doing very very well not many goals there but um, exciting play sometimes you have nil score lines or one nil score lines that that can be exciting the Tivoli Portmore game I don't think was that exciting but but the goalkeepers were outstanding Portmore's goalkeeper Williams was player of the match and he was really, really outstanding. He brought up some tremendous saves. Yeah, and despite, as you said, the match not being very exciting, and it's because of the lack of goals. As um, football lovers, we love to see goals, and this match had none of those. But Lance, despite that, the scoreline, of course, had a lot to do with the table ranking, because Tivoli, as a result of the score, ended up on fifth position, and Portmore, they went to third. And I think, you know, we're at that end of the season where the scores are actually matching up because I remember, is it two seasons ago, where I felt as if the teams were separated by bigger margins. So it was difficult, even after a draw or a loss, for the table to, of course, change the rankings. Yeah. But this season, we're seeing how close the contest is. And of course, with that draw, as I said, Tivoli went to fifth and Portmore went to third. So these two teams will be hoping that they can, of course, produce goals in the upcoming matches in order to ensure that they end up um, on a respectable standing. Yeah, and the Humberland win over Waterhouse moved them from seventh up to fourth in the standing. So the, the top half of the table at the moment, very competitive. So uh, marginal results or getting three points or getting a point um, can you know make a, a, a significant move in your positional standings. I want to say how impressed I am with the way Mount Pleasant has started the season with, with, with six wins in a row. This is the best start to a Premier League season we have seen since Mullines as newcomers in the yes. aborted 2019-2020 season started the campaign with six consecutive wins and Mount Pleasant has done that. Mullines went backwards after that and uh, COVID-19 aborted the season and then Mullines didn't really carry on after that really. But um, I don't want to juxtapose those two mm. points because Mount Pleasant <laughs> is a, a horse of a different color yes. because they have from day one been a top team in the Premier League. Even as newcomers, they were a top team because of how solid their roster is and how strong Peter Gould's investment in the project has been. So they are with their championship title last year beginning to read the, reap the rewards of their investment. And I'm happy to see Mount Pleasant doing this well, albeit because of the format of the tournament there is uh, very little in the regular season to to shout about because it's when the playoffs start yeah. that you know you really have um the decisions being made for the title all right well we're sticking with football and one team has booked a spot in the final showdown in jamaican schoolboy football's champions cup the all island schoolboy knockout clarendon college and Heidel faced off early on tuesday at the anthony spaulding sports complex in st andrew let's take some highlights with ricardo chambers and leger williams on commentary let's have a look at the match highlights then Carmen College with Jermaine Ashley's beautiful pass. Kahim Dixon with a lovely run, but unable to get on the end of it as the Jean Reli. DeAndre Gallimore with a free kick. Ryan at goal. 
came off the crossbar after a slight touch from Lee, who was good in goal. Very good in goal for Hytel today. Best chance of the first half. What a delightful ball inside from Ronaldo Bryant, the Heidel captain. But Dante Stewart could not beat Roche Borrell. A strong left arm denying him. Then in the 19th minute, Carmen College would get the opening goal. Atiba Green inside for Kellimore. His shot of the crossbar. Back out to Christopher Hall. Hall to Kahim Dixon. Dixon with a love to finish. Enjoy this one. Kyron College at their beautiful best. Was an opportunity to clear for Hytel. Clearance wasn't decisive enough and they paid the price. Dixon at that point with his fifth goal in his Champions Cup career. That was another opportunity with a lovely delivery coming from Daniel Clark. Chapman Ashley turned that one to goal. It was blocked. Clark tried his luck from distance, but once again, Tajara Lee was equal to the task, the 19-year-old. Hull for Atiba Green. Green inside to Malachi Douglas. But Atiba Green couldn't beat Lee at his near post. Wasn't enough power in the shot, really. Douglas inside the box. Picking out Kahim Dixon, his header wide of the mark. He had wrong footed Lee, but couldn't hit the target. Heidel had their opportunities in the second half. Amaria Henry with a shot from outside the 18. That one over the top. Henry showing speed here. Getting around Barrett, getting around Burrell. Then from an acute angle, spanked it over the top. Yes. He would have been disappointed with the final effort. Had options to cross as well. That looked like an innocuous pass initially from Darren Campbell. Turned out to be some trouble for Burrell who handed it in goal. And then here is Hall cutting inside. Making the pass to Kahim Dixon. And Dixon firing home with the right foot. 87th minute closer for the Clarendon College number 13 a double for him his third goal in the Champions Cup this season his 27th goal in all of schoolboy football and Clarendon College into the Champions Cup final with a 2-0 victory over Heidel at the Anthony Brilliant goals there from Kahim Dixon, ensuring that his team Clarendon College got the job done. And Lance, what a match it was for Clarendon College. They dominated from inception and they were able to get the job done. No goals for Heidel. Leger was here on set predicting and he did predict a Clarendon win. I'm happy for him. Yeah, well, to be honest, not, not rocket science to suggest that Clarendon College would have won this because there are many people feel the best team in schoolboy football at the moment. Certainly they are the most attractive team and uh, their coach Lenny Hyde demands of his players confidence on the ball posture and um, he does exude that kind of relaxation as he was when he was a player, a fine schoolboy player himself in his school, school days Lenny Hyde and he has um, ensured that his players display that kind of comfort on the ball yeah. and confidence just moving the ball around and really outstanding attacking players. It's hard to see um, a team dominating Clarendon College in schoolboy football in Jamaica. So um, I think they were pre-season favorites and at this stage they, they remain favorites because they appear to be a safe bet with almost every game they play because Heidel isn't a bad team. We know that Heidel is a very, very good team. We've yeah. seen their performances all season and uh, uh, they did miss some opportunities to score. A couple of one-on-one -on -one was the ones with the goalkeeper. So um, Heidel should be ruining the fact that they missed opportunities that they could have scored. Their coach Devin Anderson has done a tremendous job with them since he has moved from Holy Trinity. So. Um, uh, Clarendon College with a 2 0 win, Dixon with both goals, and not a surprising result, but a result that I think re emphasizes the quality that Clarendon College has. And, um, and also, because of how the, the game went on, I don't think Heidel would be, would be 
disappointed with how they played because they played well. I think they would be disappointed that they didn't take the chances that they got and uh, didn't make a better fight of it. Yeah. Well, the second semi-final between Glenmore High and Kingston College is set to kick off at 5.15 p.m. local time. That's 6.15 Eastern Caribbean time, live on Sportsmax 2 and Sportsmax Plus on the app. So that has started already. Lance, who... Okay, it's about to start. Sorry, Producer yeah. just correcting me there. Yeah. Thanks for that. Uh, Lance, who do you believe will come out on top in this matchup? Please do not be swayed by this dress. This is just a dress that my mom gifted to me and I wore it today. Okay, and and I suggest that I, I suspect that you aren't back in Kingston College. Well, you but know. Just based on what you just said. That no, you, I don't want it's, my, it's the inferred. color. No, I don't want the color of this to influence your decision. But it, would, it won't. All right, so who do you support? Well, I, I like Glenn Muir and their coach, Andrew Peart, who has a real clinical football brain. So I, I, am, I am hopeful that Glenn Muir will play well here. But because this is a, 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 a playoff fixture, and a match that eventually will decide who wins the championship. These are the moments that you can't count Kingston College out. Yeah, they are agree. The, they are the kind of team, no matter what the obstacles are in, in front of them, that they 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 know how to rise to occasions. We we're just seeing the kickoff here. Yes. And um, um, if I were a betting man, I would take Kingston College because I think on a day like this, Kingston College will know how to rise to the occasion. Having said that, what we have seen in the past weeks, there is a suspicion that the rural area teams in the Lacosta Cup are, the top teams are better than the top teams in the Manning Cup, which uh, suggests that Glenmuir as a top team in the Lacosta Cup may have a favorable look in here because there's a general feeling that the Costa Cup teams, the best ones this season, are stronger than the best Manning Cup teams. But um, in spite of that, I would still say Kingston College, because of the occasion and because of what is at stake here and because of the spirit of Kingston College and that never say die, I would give them the edge. And that's the thing about Kingston College, when even when they go down, they're able to bounce back. Yeah. So I'm going with Kingston College as well for well, you are. today. Yes, <laughs> let's take a break and come right back. We still have a lot more football to talk. Better than the rest of 